Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. Well, don't let this intimidate you because p of x is a polynomial and polynomials are fun to work with. And it definitely makes this differential equation easy and solvable. So what are we going to do? Well, polynomials are kind of interesting. One of the things that we always have to consider with polynomials, if you have a polynomial equation, whether differential or not, you always have to think about the degree of the polynomial. Do we know the degree of p of x? We don't, but we're going to speculate on that and use it in our solution. So what does this mean? First of all, let's talk about this expression. That means the derivative of p of x, right? In other words, the rate of change. Now, we are subtracting the polynomial. We are subtracting from a polynomial, the derivative of that polynomial, and we're getting x squared. Is that possible? Let's see what happens. So I don't know the degree of p of x, but I can definitely make an assumption. Notice that polynomials can be written as a n x to the power n, a sub n minus 1, x to the power n minus 1, where a n, a n minus 1, so on and so forth, are real numbers, and here n, all these powers are whole numbers. So we're not using any negative exponents, we're not using radicals, we're not using 1 over x, so on and so forth. So, for example, a polynomial would be x cubed plus 2x plus 1 would be a polynomial. Now, let's think about this expression here. Can our polynomial be cubic? Can it be a quartic? Can it be linear? Well, first of all, notice that when you differentiate a polynomial, and how do you differentiate a polynomial? Let's take a look at some of examples. Maybe briefly talk about differentiation here. So if p of x is what I gave you above, let's go ahead and differentiate. How do you differentiate by using the power rule? Well, the derivative of x to the power n is n times x to the power n minus 1. So by reducing the power by 1 and moving the coefficient or the power, making the coefficient, you get 3x squared. And the derivative of 2x is basically 2 times 1 times x to the power 0, but it's just 2. So we can safely say that the derivative of ax, where a is a non-zero coefficient, is just going to be a simply, right? So it's easy. The derivative of 2x is 2. A lot of people think that calculus is complicated, like differentiation is complicated, but differentiation is actually super duper easy. Integration is not the same way, but again, it can be done. Anyways, the derivative of 1, 1 is a constant, it is going to be 0, we don't need to write it because constants don't change, therefore the rates of change is always 0. Okay, so that's how we found the derivative of this polynomial. Well, what does this tell you? Well, if you start with a cubic polynomial, its derivative is going to be quadratic. So the degree is reduced. What does that tell you? That tells you that p of x needs to be quadratic, right? Because if it's quadratic and if I differentiate it, its derivative is going to be linear and a quadratic minus a linear is going to be quadratic. Why? Because the quadratic term is not going to cancel out by linear. So we're going to end up with x squared or we can end up with x squared. So we now know that the degree of p of x must be and I can just write it as deg, which stands for degree of p of x must be 2 in this case. And if you try other cases like, you know, cubic, quartic, linear, you're going to notice that we do not get this type of equation from those polynomials. So p of x must be quadratic. And that was an important result. Let's go ahead and use that result in our solution. And again, our equation is p of x minus p prime of x, which is the derivative of p of x, equals x squared. Great. So having said that the degree of p of x is equal to 2, I can write p of x as ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, c are real numbers, and a does not equal 0. Of course, otherwise we're not going to have a quadratic. Of course, uh, this is a polynomial and we can easily differentiate it by using the power rule. Let's go ahead and do that. The derivative of x squared is 2x, so it's going to give me a times 2x, which is 2ax. The derivative of bx, remember we talked about it, a constant times x is going to be the constant when differentiated and the derivative of the constant is going to be 0. This is the reason why we use, when we integrate some functions, we say blah 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 plus c, and if you don't add the constant, you lose points on the test. So make sure you always do that and don't make your professor angry. Okay, anyways, this is my derivative, this is my polynomial, what am I going to do next? I'm going to plug them in 
this equation and find a b c the rest is as easy as a b c okay i talk too much again apologize let me go ahead and get on with the solution so let's go ahead and replace p of x here with a x squared plus b x plus c from that i need to subtract the derivative which is 2 a x plus b and i want the result to be x squared great all right so let's go ahead and simplify this a x squared is right there now I have bx plus c if you negate everything in the parentheses you're gonna be getting negative 2x minus b is equal to x squared now notice that both sides are polynomials so they're true for all values of x which are real in this case so that gives us a really strong statement so I can just go ahead and combine like terms here the terms with x and then of course the constants so this is a super duper powerful expression because this is true for all real values of x now what am i going to do with this one well i'm just going to compare the coefficients i have a x squared on the left hand side and i have one x squared on the right hand side what is that supposed to mean it means that a equals one awesome okay what else can we say well the coefficient of x on the left hand side is equal to b minus 2a but there is no x on the right hand side which means the coefficient of x is 0 which means b minus 2a is equal to 0 which means b is equal to 2a which means b is equal to 2 because a is equal to 1. so i got a equals 1 and b equals 2 and let's see what the constant gives us the constant term is c minus b on the left hand side the constant term on the right hand side is non-existent so it's zero when something doesn't exist that doesn't mean it doesn't exist it exists but it's just zero you don't see it okay so that's a zero and this gives us c minus b equals zero and this gives us c equals b and this gives us c equals two because b equals two and what did i get from here i got that a is equal to one b is equal to two and c is equal to two but i'm looking for p of x right the polynomial and my polynomial remember if you remember what our assumption was after looking through some different options here we said that p of x must be quadratic why because if you subtract its derivative from p of x you still get a quadratic and x squared is quadratic and i want to get a quadratic okay let's go ahead and finalize this so p of x was written as a x squared plus bx plus c so that means having uh, the a b c values i can write my p of x as 1x squared plus 2x plus 2 and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe and i'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe, take care, and bye-bye.